My name is Aileen Rizzo. I am a math consultant at Fresno County Office of Education. This will be my 16th year working in the field of education. I am attending Fresno Pacific University to earn a second master's in secondary math education. This presentation, Education in Lebanon, is in compliance with the requirements of ED 779, Values in School and Society. I chose Lebanon because my husband's family is from Bikfaya, Lebanon. Having been exposed to the culture, food, and language already, I was very interested to learn more about the country. Their family name is Marcosel, and I was interested in seeing how the history, the social ideals, and everything just comes together to affect the educational system. So let's start off by looking at some history. Lebanon is bordered by Syria, Israel, and the Mediterranean Sea. It is a relatively young country who was ruled by the Ottoman Empire until after World War I, when it became a French territory. On November 22, 1943, Lebanon gained its independence and quickly became an important commercial and financial center of the Middle East. The Lebanese people enjoyed great prosperity and this prosperity continued until the mid-1970s. That's when they entered a civil war. And like with any war, there were many contributing factors to the Lebanese civil war. Some major factors included religious tensions. There were tensions between the Christians, which are called Maronites, and there are many Maronite churches even in um, our own U.S., and the Muslims. There were also dislocated Palestinians, and that proved to be a very um, tension-driven factor for the civil war, since the Palestinians were being driven out of neighboring countries. And there was also the involvement of Syria and Israel, who ended up occupying some of, a lot of Lebanon after the civil war. Now the war destroyed the economy and it also threatened the entire educational system since many school buildings were reduced to rubble and school had to be closed for months in order to clear out, clean up, and to rebuild the buildings that were needed for the children. Now let's look at some culture that the Lebanese are um, influenced by. Arabic is the official language of Lebanon, but Armenian, English, and French are also commonly spoken. The population is very diverse, and there are 17 distinct ethnic groups that are recognized by law and share power in the government. Classes of the Lebanese people are distinguished by their language and accent, and so it is very important to speak Arabic but also important about what accent you speak Arabic with. And so if you have a Beirut, which is the capital of Lebanon, if you have a Beirut style accent, you are considered in the highest class and the most prestigious class. During the Ottoman Empire, Lebanon enjoyed a lot of freedom and they imported from other European countries. And so that, along with the French rule, also provided the country to have a unique blend of both an Arab and a European style. So they're a very unique country in that respect. Let's look at some educational history. Under the Ottoman Empire rule, um, every ethnic or religious group made the educational decisions that they thought were appropriate for their own use. And in the 18th century, a lot of missionaries came into the country and found in many private schools. These private schools were at one time the sole source of secondary education. And even today, Lebanon is said to have the best private school system in the Middle East. With the French occupation came a mandate for a national education system. And this system mirrored the French educational system and was only minorly changed when the um, Lebanese people gain their independence. The only minor change they really made was to make 
Arabic, now the official language of the country, and along with French taught in schools, English would also be taught in schools. So there are a lot of challenges, and there are a lot of challenges for different reasons, for the different um, ethnic groups that are there, for the civil war they've been through. And so let's take a look at what some of those challenges are. So Lebanon is truly a polygots culture, and with that brings many of these challenges that we've briefly discussed. It has created a divide between the haves and the have-nots. The more wealthy families, the more wealthy communities, tend to be those that are of Lebanese descent. And so what is required to be of Lebanese descent is for the father to be Lebanese. If the father is not Lebanese, but the mother is, the child is not considered a Lebanese national. So they have to be a Lebanese father um, to, ha to be considered Lebanese. Now, these families that are in the higher class or the more wealthy, they send their children to the private schools. And the quality of education is very high there because there are private schools that have been around for a long time. They have a good tradition, a good founding. And so they have very high quality education. One of the complaints there and the challenges is that these schools are often taught in English or French and it is becoming more common for, for these children going to these schools to lose their ability to speak the Arab, Arabic language. Many children are losing their native language and technology innovation is seeing a shift in, into English more as a more common language. These students are using Facebook, they're tweeting, they're seeing movies in English and so they're tending to use English more often. Now the poor communities send their children to public schools because they have no other choice. They can't afford the private schools. And this picture that we're seeing right now is the picture of a common private school. There are a lot of challenges with the public school system and let's look at some in detail. And let's keep in mind that Lebanon is a more open and free country compared to other Arab nations. And that does allow the foreign influences such as I spoke of Facebook and so on to be more common in Lebanon than you'll see in other Arab nations. I quote from one of the articles in the bibliography, refugee and migrant children without papers cannot be registered in an official Lebanese school. So we're seeing many children from refugees, especially from Syria, um, they're coming from Syria and the refugees and they can't be enrolled in school. Other children from mixed nationality marriages are not legally recognized. If it's a mixed nationality marriage, marriage that's not re legally recognized, those children cannot be registered in schools. There are programs now coming up that are trying to get education to these children that are considered the outsiders because um, these children have nowhere else to go. There are programs such as the Insan School, and they're trying to meet the educational needs of these children, but there's limited space, and there's still an influx of refugees, especially from Syria. Migrant workers who leave their sponsor families lose their papers, and so they cannot enroll their children. So there's different groups that are considered outsiders to this educational system, but they still need to be educated. So that is one of the big challenges for the public school system. There is a challenge also of rebuilding, especially after the Civil War. And so in places of Lebanon, like the Akar region, public schooling is very poor, poor quality. Teachers and principals describe a hopeless situation where even basics such as heat, desks, and even toilets are lacking. There is no library, there is no science labs, and the state even chooses to hire unqualified teachers to reduce the funding. The Civil War destroyed much of the educational structure, and the private schools flourish because they meet the needs of the upper class, but the poor are left with these less than adequate educational opportunities for their children. And even if they have high motivation, they have a very hard time 
to even have the basic necessities at their schools for them. So the government has issued a five-year plan. The five-year plan that was launched in 2010 that would rehabilitate all public schools. International organizations like the World Bank have also been working to rebuild the school system. And one of the first things on the list of changes is really the quality of the teachers. This is an interesting statistic here. 54.5% of teachers do not have a university degree. They are opting to hire people who are less qualified so that they have to so that they don't have to spend as much money. Another way that they're doing that is that many teachers that they're hiring are on short-term contracts instead of a long-term contracts. And that also helps with the funding um, for the state, but it doesn't do any good for the children in the educational system. So those are the two focuses of their goals to change the, uh, the teachers, um, the quality of the teachers, and another focus is the language. The language of education is also a focus because core academics such as math and science are taught in French, yet schools lack well-qualified teachers to teach the French language. And so students are pretty much learning a core academic in a language that's kind of foreign to them. So that is a big struggle and, an, and a definite focus of, of a change that needs to be met. And the third and final focus is monitoring. Monitoring is not happening like it should be. Um, it is minorly happening in the north and so teachers performance is very poor. They're not monitoring the teachers um, use of educational strategies that will work in the classroom and another reason for monitoring is that some students are reporting abuse and being beaten by teachers because there is just no monitoring at all. So definitely a need there um, in one of the goals. So some current trends, some trends that are happening that are positive, that are these um, right steps to a, a good um, change and that needs to happen in the educational system is teacher development. And so there's been professional development for teachers in the district of a car. This has been happening for two years now. Nine public schools offer weekly remedial lessons for students in grades seven, eight, and nine in mathematics, science, and foreign language, these students who need remediation would otherwise be out and would be left behind or drop out of school because they cannot catch up. And so these are being offered in the last three months of school and to students who can't afford um, a private tutor or any other way to um, gain the knowledge that they need to finish their education. And Lebanon is also seeing the, the um, positive effect of an informal setting. So we're, we're getting that to that too in the U.S. We're starting to use groups, we're having students discuss, and they're starting to see the effects of this, the positive effects of this as well. Informal settings that do not require uniforms, homework, or tests are seeing positive results. And teachers are, are going into these remediation programs and having the freedom to teach and to review in whatever manner the, t the students need. And so they're having this, um, this freedom to do so and letting the students kind of be um, the leaders of their own education, education in the classroom and then having the teachers be the guide, which we're also seeing in the U.S. And they're seeing how great that that can produce great effects and great results. Um, one of the big contributors to this um, pilot of remedial classes was the MCC, the Millennium Challenge Corporation. And they helped by covering the salaries of the teachers by where um, 500 students were able to benefit. So that was a great, a great trend that's happening. And just quickly to close up, um, a reflection of what I've seen. We've talked about how different things in our course um, um, react to each other and affect each other. We talked about the idea and the culture. And so Lebanese ideal is their language and your place of birth. And that gives you either a privileged status or a non or a underprivileged status. And so um, that's one of the big um, challenges to overcome is to kind of increase tolerance and acceptability of even refugees, of migrant workers, of these underprivileged children 
and to get them the quality of education that they need. Of course, we have this five-year plan, but we need to realize that the private schools versus the public schools is a big dichotomy. And a great dichotomy because we have the private schools who um, are offering a better quality of education but can only be afforded by the wealthy. We have the public school system that has teachers that are not even qualified to teach. And so that is definitely a need for some changes and some work that needs to be done there. And of course, the whole country is still trying to recoup after a major civil war that lasted 15 years and destroyed their economy and um, their unity. And so definitely rebuilding from that is a, a big priority of the Lebanese um, educational system. It needs to be. And this five-year plan is still not completed yet, but um, there's a lot of um, hope that this will work, and I hope that, that, that it will work for the children in Lebanon, no matter where they were born, but that they will get the education that they need. Um, you'll see here my bibliography from the sources that I used to complete this presentation, and I thank you for your time.